नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम टू पी गुरुज चैनल दिस इज पी गुरुज प्राइम टाइम एंड वन डे नाइट्स और आस्क अभिजीत नाइट्स वी हैव अ होल स्लेट ऑफ क्वेश्चन टूडे दैट आर बींग डिरेक्टेड फॉर अभिजीत आई माइट एड सम ऑफ दैम आर वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन आई रियली लाइक द वे यू ऑल जम्प इन एंड हेल्प अस इन ट्राइंग टू फाइंड आउट uh you know all the different things and the perspectives of somebody who i call or who i consider as a very very astute brain uh, so abhijit namaskar and welcome to p guru's channel vel vel vetri vel and thanks for having me on as usual and vel vel vetri vel to you to abhijit and viewers before i put the first question i just want to tell you that i have in, ha- in my hand the durga chakra and for those of you who are going to be joining today as a gold member which is 49 dollars a month and and by the way you can feel free to stop after a month or two which is fine with me all i am trying to do is to encourage you to get some of your money's worth when when you get something like this durga chakra which is a hand laser crafted thing it takes about an hour to do it and somebody who does this thing does it for passion and for spreading sanatana dharma this is a beautiful beautiful work of art and if you become a gold member today all you need to do is two things become a member and then send me the mailing address you have to be in the united states to be able to get it unfortunately we are not able to send it to other countries today at this time and 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 mail it to sri@sriir.com s r e e at s r e e i y e r dot com. So let us jump straight into questions now. The first question, Abhijit, for you is from Balaji K R. Are C I A N S A military officials capable of lobbying hard action against China if they find out COVID nineteen was a bio weapon? Biden may be compromised, but aren't there any patriotic souls? Look. <laughs> Patriotism end ends where money begins, boss. Uh, in my experience, that's the case. Look, there's no proof right now that it was weaponized, that it was made more virulent. Look, there's a big difference between weaponization and virulence, um, and that mostly has to do with intent. All right, uh, because a chemical agent, when you weaponize it, there is a certain telltale sign, which is you have to make it into a powder. or a gas that has uh, even spread the problem with um, the problem with biological weapons is it spreads from human to human so making so when you take an already airborne disease you've already got the perfect carrier now how do you nail weaponization it has to be intent uh there are signs that there was uh, errors of omission when it leaked crimes of commission when it was allowed to go abroad and spread without containment or without warning with actual information suppression by the chinese government will that actually hold as weaponization we don't know so remember there are so many legal loopholes out here the powers that be can be completely compromised now look at the g7 statement even saying that we will investigate uh, uh uh what happened or we will ensure the who gets a proper investigation uh they are not talking about the rest of the ecosystem that actively helped china suppress information youtube which is owned by google so both and google did it with its search engines as well so google youtube <coughs> facebook twitter amazon which were all busy suppressing information amazon through its servers uh, busy suppressing information about uh, this uh, 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 virus outbreak and its origins and things like that the bill and melinda gates foundation which was controlling information uh, the who dr ted owes his election as who chief to china uh, and uh, Uh, he appointed peter dasak the man who was funding the wuhan uh, uh, lab to head the investigation into the wuhan lab and dr fauci who was in bed with all these guys who is best of friends with mark zuckerberg best of friends with uh, bill gates and because bill gates when you've got about 80 odd billion dollars to spend around 40 to 80 odd billion dollars to spend around you will earn a lot of loyalty so 
there's been absolutely zero movement. And mind you, no country is asking for it, including India. What does that tell you about the Indian leadership? So nobody is interested in getting to the bottom of this, and it won't. It will all be dismissed outright as conspiracy theory. And the easiest example of this is uh, very simply New York Times, Economist, Financial Times, Washington Post, they were all at the forefront of the Iraq weapons of mass destruction story. Every person who was involved in the Iraq of weapons of mass destruction nonsense, what were the consequences to their career? Exactly zero. So what's going to happen here? Zero. All right. The next question is from Ramesh Nayak. What do you think the government should do to the four women from Kerala who joined ISIS and are now demanding a refuge back to India? First, it doesn't matter what their crimes are. If they're Indian citizens, even if one of them became the head of ISIS or Al-Qaeda, you have to get them back. Okay. Uh, if they want to. Now, the thing is, obviously, they have committed crimes in Afghanistan. So, it is also the Afghan government's right to try them for their crimes in Afghanistan and for India to provide consular assistance in their zealous legal defense. So, there are two things out here. One is India is obliged to provide uh, 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 a legal counsel to them and consular assistance, engage a lawyer if they're unable to do so themselves, number one. Number two, they have to help the family go there, meet these kids and all of that. Number three, they have to be talking informally, at least to the Afghan government and put in formal requests saying, you know, if they get jailed or whatever, let them serve their jail term in India, etc., etc., etc. This is normal. This every country has to do for all its criminals, irrespective of what the crime is. You can't just throw them to the wolves like that. All right. So there, there, there is no question about this. Next question is from Sai. Because remember, if you make an exception for these people because they were uh, uh, ISIS, tomorrow if there's a Congress or a left government, remember what they'll do for so-called Hindu terrorists. Even if it's not terrorism, I mean, how many Hindu terrorists do you know, realistically? Or what's the fatality of Hindu terrorism? It's mostly to do with, uh, you know, uh, trumped up charges and things like that. But you know what the left will do. So you can't afford to make these distinctions based on ideology. Next question is from Sai. Why are Japanese products, especially automobiles, so reliable? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Uh, Japanese and Korean products are now becoming extremely reliable. And, you know, the biggest advertisement for them is the fact that ISIS and Al-Qaeda, you look at their trucks, uh, Sudan, uh, any kind of war ravaged place, Isuzu, uh, Toyota, Nissan, uh, increasingly Hyundai as well, pickup trucks and uh, Jeeps are the uh, preferred vehicle of choice. Why? Because they can skip three, four, five services and nothing will happen to them. They can fjord through water and nothing will happen with them. The thing is, if you notice, the Japanese are no longer leading in technology in cars. If you look at Japanese cars, they follow at least three to four years behind the Germans. And the problem is German cars are becoming notoriously unreliable. They keep introducing, they're the trendsetters in technology. So the technology they introduce hasn't been ruggedized and it's prone to failure. So I'm just speculating. It's the fact that because Germany leads and all European cars are like this. Even Jaguar and Range Rover has an extremely high unreliability rate. You look at all insurance companies in Europe and America. BMW, Mercedes, uh, 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 Audi, uh, uh, Jaguar, Range Rover have the highest breakdown rates and failure rates. Uh, and it has to do with them wanting to have snazzy technology and grab headlines. They are not meant for a market that keeps its car for 10, 12 years. It's meant for a high disposable income.
the market that changes its car every two to three years, like you would change your phone. And there is a big second-hand market in all those countries as well. Japan's not like that, right? So you have two very different market philosophies, two very different approaches to technology. And what's very curious is that that approach to technology was the same in World War II. The Germans don't seem to have learned to uh, uh, seem to have learned the Tiger tanks, the German Tiger tanks. Twice the number were lost to mechanical failure than where to Red Army direct tank fire or, 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 or di- uh, as in Red Army hits of the Tiger were half that of Tiger's own mechanical failures. So it's a very common theme that's been running through German technology for a while now. Um, if I could add to what Abhijit just said, one of the reasons why the Japanese cars are so good and we'll come to Korean cars after that is that after Second World War, Japan was completely decimated. I mean, decimated as in smashed to the ground. They were completely destroyed. And and by the time the, the war ended, they didn't even have petrol to fire some of the vehicles that were going around in the streets of Tokyo. They were using actually coal-fired uh, uh, engines that would propel them around. I'm just giving you a perspective on how bad things were. So then these Nuremberg style trials also took place for the war criminals of uh, Japan, like Tojo, for example, the prime minister, I believe he was tried and I don't remember all the other names. But the point I'm trying to make is an American professor went in the early 50s, if I remember correctly, to tell some of the uh, Japanese industry leaders, what is quality, basic thing, what is quality, how do you make a product which is of good quality. And, And from there, the principles were picked up for the Japanese. You saw Sony come in the 60s and Sony's, you know, breakout product was the Walkman. I mean, they could miniaturize it so well that the Walkman captured the market in the 70s as a cassette player. And, and we should remember that it was Philips who invented the cassette technology. Philips invented cassette technology, CD-ROM, DVD, Blu-ray. All these things are invented in the Europe, but unfortunately they are not you know, mass marketed here. Anyway, back to the business of cars. So I believe that the Japanese cars entered the US markets in the late 70s, early 80s. Their breakout product was the Honda Accord. Honda Accord set such standards that everybody started making their cars to look more like Honda Accord. So this is one thing. And the Koreans were always, almost always wanting to be like, for example, Samsung wanted to be Sony. Today, Sony wants to be like Samsung, but Samsung wants to be Sony. So so these, the the Korean companies essentially followed the uh, Japanese model and they started making their cars better and better. But we should remember that the Hyundai that came initially wasn't very good. It improved dramatically over a period of 10 to 15 years. However, one thing that but I you know, you see this with you see this with all technology. There used to be a time when Taiwanese computers were considered rubbish. You don't buy Taiwanese. Today, the Taiwanese own the chip market, right? Uh, this was the same about Korean technology. You reach a stage of quality, but that still doesn't answer that with two advanced industrial powers, Germany and Japan. Why does one produce such unreliable cars and why does one produce such reliable cars? Because Um, Germany was all focused on quality. Germany used to have a reputation of terrible quality through the 1800s. Bismarck had to enact a quality program. So, you know, this famous German focus on quality comes only with Bismarck. It was very much a top-down approach. Before that, if you said anything was German, it was considered extremely low quality and unreliable. Uh, German steel, even German steel. Uh, And then it became a byword for quality. So I think it's it's still a very different. I don't think the quality explanation suits that particular this one. I think it has more to do with redundancy and market replacement rates than it does with quality. Um, Okay, we can we can talk about this more, but let's go on. There are a lot of questions to go through. So we'll work through the questions for now. Ioni Protocol wants to know, the viewing rate of Christian conversions won't be 30% Christian. Why doesn't RSS and similar organization do large-scale ghar wapsi to counter them? Easier said than done. Hi, you know, ghar wapsi is not just going there and converting them. 
There's a whole ecosystem. You need schools, you need colleges, you need jobs. If you convert to Christianity, you're guaranteed admission into a school, into a college, uh, into a job. Where's the RSS going to do it? For the last seven years, you've had a, a BJP government. What have they done? Nothing, na? So Garvapsi is not like doing susu. You feel like it, so you go do it. Uh, the next question is from Ramesh Nayak. How do you think South Korea is able to pro project itself as a soft power through its music, TV series and cinema? They're just very good. It's that quality factor I told you about. It's the same way Turkey is now able to project itself. Before Turkish, who had ever heard of Turkish serials or anything? I mean, Turkish quality isn't very good. That's a different matter. But they're still able to project. Uh, you you look at any, uh, uh, and you know, this used to happen before with Japan, with manga, anime, and things like that, right? Uh, 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 with uh, uh, Bushido and Zen and uh, Samurai and all that, uh, this thing. So it happens with every country that once you're economically resurgent, once you break a certain quality barrier, you're able to do it. Uh, Korean food has taken off like never before. You didn't mention Korean food, but that is today, actually, I would say that Korean food is a very close second to Japanese food in terms of how it is perceived in fine dining. Um, so there's a lot of things to it. Yeah, to, to add to what you just said, Abhijit, um, I love some of the series that comes on Netflix. For instance, I love Chief of Staff. If you like political th thrillers, watch Chief of Staff, it was a Korean story. Right now I'm watching another one called Vincenzo. And, and he's, he's, this is a guy who's uh, kind of born in Korea, but he lives his uh, early years in Italy and then gets uh, tangled with mafia. He has a law degree, comes back to South Korea. Interesting things happen. Very, very interesting. The, the way it's best Korean serial to watch is Kingdom. It's a zombie movie. It is the, sorry, zombie series. It is the best zombie series ever, ever made. <laughs> Bar none. Oh, also, Bar um, none. Even if you're not into zombies, just watch it because it is such a thriller. It is the most amazing serial I have seen in a very, very long time. Also, guys, you may not know this. A lot of Bollywood music gets played in the malls in South Korea. Uh, the last time I was in a mall in yeah. South Korea, they were belting out Daler Mandi songs left, right and center. I mean, amazing stuff. Anyway, next question is uh, again from Ramesh Nayak. With the communists destroying the economy and giving Islamists a free run, do you think Kerala may be the next Kashmir? Yes, it almost certainly will. Uh, and there's a reason for it. It's mostly because these... Um, uh, the Congress isn't fighting the CPIM anymore. The Congress is fighting the BJP for number two spot. Because they know if they lose number two spot, there will be no future. They may become number one by sheer default if the CPIM screws up particularly bad. So what is happening is, while the Congress and BJP are fighting for number two spot, the CPIM is getting away with anything and everything it wants to do, including, you know, a very lax policy on Islamization and Islamic terrorism. And there's nothing you can do about it because the Congress won't speak out against it either. Because remember, most of Rahul Gandhi's voters in his constituency were Muslim. So there's, there's nothing that's going to happen out there. Next question is from Balaji K.R. If an Islamic organization nukes multiple cities of Israel, should India offer them land to run the government in exile? Which other countries will offer? Which offer will Israel accept? Huh? What? Okay. What will Israel accept? If an Islami, Islamic organization nukes multiple cities of Israel, okay, and... Yeah, I don't want to answer these hypothetical questions. Okay. That's fine. Let's get, let's go you know, to the what next if there's question. an alien invasion and things like that? <laughs> Poet on riot. 
Have you seen Yes Minister, Prime Minister? Is this also a true reflection of Indian bureaucracy? Are politicians so gullible that politicians can be rendered ineffective? Yes. You know, I keep watching, I watch Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister once a year to remind myself exactly how dumb bureaucrats are and how dumber some politicians are. But remember, even the level of competence you see in Yes Minister, Yes Prime Minister is dwarfed by the level of competence they have here. There you have permanent secretaries. Here you have uh, non-permanent secretaries who get shifted from uh, one end of the alimentary canal food processing to the other end of the alimentary canal public sanitation. <laughs> so you know this, even what minimal expertise Sir Humphrey Appleby could have built up your secretaries, joint secretaries, etc. cannot. I particularly love that one conversation where Humphrey Appleby is interviewing for the job of the cabinet secretary equivalent. And, and the, the existing cabinet secretary will say that the job is based on the kind of questions you are going to ask. Have you I remember that episode? That's an S minister. Hmm. Okay. Uh, next question is from Hardik. Thunky, all software-defined radios bought by armed forces are of NATO software and hardware, STDs. So, communication between forces and that with the US is matter for establishing a communication protocol rather than a hardware issue. Hardik, you have to frame your questions a little bit better. Are you trying to say that most... What is an STD? Do you know what an STD is? Not the usual not it's Indian parlance with armed forces and weaponry boss. No? Okay. Uh, Hardik Thanki, please expand your question and resend it. Thank you. And um, ma make sure that you, you press, phrase it correctly also. Sai Shreyas wants we to know. We keep saying this every single time. Please stop sending acronyms. Yeah. And, and, and when you're typing from your smartphone, yeah, we realize your questions are being typed from smartphone. Please go back and look at it before you hit the send button. It's, uh, it, it, it defeats the purpose, you know. It's very difficult to ask a proper question. If I have to edit it in my head before I'm, you know, asking it, it's not easy. Next question from Sai Shreyas K. Hey, Abhijit, when do you think the 3D printing will take off in the US? And will this make the US a leading power once again, thus trumping China? Look, whatever chances that America now has, I don't think China will overtake America. But once you've gotten into the woke revolution, American innovation will get start. It has already started getting stunted. Innovation happens in, to quote Rabindranath Tagore, in a... Uh, world that is free of fear, where the mind is free, where words come out from the depths of truth. Okay, where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection. Not where victimhood never stretches its arms towards perfection. Victimhood is the very definition of not tirelessly striving. Okay, political correctness is the exact opposite of where words come out from the depths of truth. There's a reason for it. So you can't keep having, China will not catch up to America because they have their own problems. They're going to be stuck in the middle income trap for a very long time now. Uh, but American power will erode. Is it going to affect American supremacy? Not very quickly. But in another 30, 40, 50 years time, it will which I didn't think was possible because technically the information revolution should have given you an insurmountable edge. I don't see who the replacement for America is going to be, but I, I take it from me, it's not going to be China. Let's see what comes after China. Oh, uh, this is another example of 3D printing. Uh, what, what happens is you take a piece of wood and then a laser machine goes and precisely cuts it. And then afterwards, the thing is plastered on the base plate which is, you know, contoured to fit it properly. So 
This gives you an example of 3D printing. These are exquisitely done. It can do it on many, many materials. This is done on wood. And, uh, you know, th this is here to stay. The next question is, Manthan wants to know, is it true that during the 65 war, Pakistan Air Force performed better than the Indian Air Force? How much truth in M.M. Alam downing five Indian Hawker Hunter under one minute with F-86 Sabre? She did not drown down five in uh, in under one minute. That was just bullshit propaganda that was concocted. They did do very well in uh, a lot of air wars. They held their own. They prevented a complete walkover by the Indian Air Force. Uh, uh, so it wasn't the kind of collapse, say, the Egyptian or Syrian Air Forces saw against the Israeli Air Force. Uh, they didn't win either. They, they tried to keep telling you that they won. They did not. But remember... Uh, why are you saying their quality has deteriorated? Uh, uh, you know, we uh, they, they managed to shoot down one of our planes uh, to one of their planes shot down, almost certainly. Ours is proven, theirs remains unproven, but everybody who knows anything says it, it, definitely some plane was shot down. Uh, and uh, they were able to mount a retaliatory strike within hours of us uh, uh, planning. Uh, we planned for months. They were able to do a similar retaliatory strike within hours. It missed its target. That's fine. Uh, but that's very common. What was the target? Uh, so, you know, I'm not sure of a deterioration of quality. Never make this mistake. Never, un Even if your enemy is the worst on earth, never make the mistake of underestimating the enemy. Abhijit, what was the target? It was an army uh, base. I see, I see. Uh, next question is, uh, Aam Admi Topics, is formation of Maler Kotla district a threat to national security? Yes, it is. Any kind of gerrymandering to uh, appease a religious majority uh, is, uh, to create an artificial religious majority is a threat. Next question from Akshit Chandok. Abhijit, why do you think the West detests Hinduism so much? Is it Pagan hatred or something else? Why, do the, why does the West hate Hinduism so much? They just hate everything that, uh, you know, uh, that doesn't fit into their narrative right now. If you love Islam, you hate Hinduism. It's that simple. It's nothing to do with pagans per se. It's just more to do with the social justice narrative. It's the way sociology has moved. That. R. Sharma wants to know, His Highness Al Mitro, that's you, following you from Sham to Advaita to P. Guru, who is your favorite tea and temple? Mine is Meenakshi Amman story with Aragar is great and Sri. What is yours? Favorite Tamil Nadu temple? My favorite is actually Dharasuram. And it's for an architectural reason that each one of the steps on that temple, it's a musical temple. So you strike each one of the steps, uh, it produces a different uh, sound. Where is it located? Dharasuram. It's one of the five, uh, four great Chora temples. So there's Gangai Konda Chorapuram. Uh, there's the, uh, 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 in the Peri uh, Tanjavur Periyakoil. Uh, 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 and uh, Dharasuram and there's one more. I forget what the fourth one is. Uh, viewers, uh, Gangai Konda Surapuram is on the coast, a place called Kaveri Pum Batinam, if I remember correctly. The other one, Big Temple, is in Tanjavur proper. And Dharasuram is the, is the name of a place. Sorry, Big Temple, we call it Big Temple. It's technically called the Brihadishwara Koil. Brihadishwara Temple, right, right. A humongous Shiva uh, Lingam. Oh my God, I think what, 8, 10 feet high? It's, it's even the Nandi is huge. Nandi is huge. Mm. Oh God, it's uh, it's just an amazing piece of architecture. Uh, we can go on and on. There are YouTube videos about Raja Raja Chora who built the temple and also whether he was the greatest Tamil king ever. So you can watch that on YouTube. It's a beautifully made. Uh, and you know what's very surprising is that the construction technique was almost the same as the pyramids. At one point, the ramp uh, there are descriptions which tell you that the ramp that was 
built to uh, you know take the capstone up to the very top of the gopuram it was almost 24 kilometers long yes it's a place called uh, saraballa capstone yes uh, the capstone weighs something like a few what 20 30 40 tons at least yes because yes. that topmost pinnacle what we call the capstone is uh, uh, what uh, it's uh, it's gigantic yes it's a single piece of stone yes yes yeah so the uh, ramp itself was something to behold at one point of time yeah it's so, so the ramp started in a village called sarapallam even today that village is there and people can actually see the traces of the the ramp i mean they are saying that you know you can actually trace the uh, path of how the ramp may have gone and it was done by using elephants to pull the thing incredible feat i think it took 12 years or something to build the temple it was just one of those amazing things never i mean if you are going on a pilgrimage to south you should have rameshwaram and the big temple in tanjavur for sure meenakshi temple three temples that you must see each one is a beauty in itself amazing amazing no no, no. wait wait see see the pilgrimage temples are different the architectural temples are different that aapke liye architecture right. hai hamare liye pilgrimage hai hum budde ho gaye hain ha ha nahi 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 because the pilgrimage temples are shringeri uh, 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 madurai meenakshi and uh, id uh, 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 kanchipuram uh, sorry Nithin, rameshwaram nitin vishwa wants to know uh, how far has india come in nuclear fusion technology what are the primary civilian and military applications of this technology where nowhere in fusion huh? uh, as in the world itself is nowhere in fusion so india is also nowhere near fusion uh, it's just like you know uh, this entire three stage nuclear program has now been uh, switched to a two stage nuclear program and even there uh, for the last what 8 to 10 years we've been hearing every single year oh uh, it's uh, the design of the indigenous reactor has been okayed 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 this story has been continuing for the last 10 years so uh, it's not going anywhere remember there is a problem with any program that is not directly supervised by the pmo and micromanaged by the pmo because the nuclear submarine program and the ballistic missile program was micromanaged out of the pmo and still continues to be with very close attention paid by the pmo it has a huge impact on the deliverables the nuclear reactor program is not monitored by the pmo it's left to the uh, 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 atomic energy agency and just like every other defense program which is like oh it's going to be breakthrough and it's like constantly about to happen 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 uh, it won't so uh, yeah it's it's just one of those things it's um, not really happening on the other hand look at the success of uh, 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 this thing of uh, 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 either our naval ballistic missiles or our land ballistic missiles or our uh, nuclear submarine that is the model that should be but see how much micromanagement will you do that is also problematic because there you know the secrecy is so great you bypass cert a lot of the bureaucratic controls and incompetences and inefficiencies and processes uh viewers we are halfway through the program and i just wanted to tell you that if you become a gold member today i'll be shipping this to you free of cost and you just need to send your shipping address after becoming a member to sri@sriir.com let's go to the next question shivam sharma wants to know abhijit why hasn't there been a military coup in india when there have been several in pakistan and bangladesh i thought there was only one military coup in bangladesh but i could be wrong uh no there've been near coups and things like that in bangladesh um what happens is in india there's this um, i think he's a princeton historian he's written a very good book about it they proved the army the british actually proved the army after 1857 they proved it against coups okay because they made all the regiments ethnically decided you know the chamar regiment the maratha regiment the rajput regiment the madras Boka. rifles etc etc et 
as opposed to Pakistan, where you had where a religious identity trumped uh, a lot of the ethnic identities and brought it together initially, at least, because uh, you know when the ba- that that kind of breaks up when Bangladesh happens and that's on verge. Uh, it, it, it has frayed sometimes with Pashtuns and things like that and with the Shia Sunni conflict. But in the early stages, uh, it did not. Whereas in India, those divisions were very deep. Second, starting from the 1930s, when the Congress leadership was absolutely convinced that uh, 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 independence was around the corner, you look at the amount of thought that Sardar Patel, Nehru, Raj Gopalachari, put into this question. They actually, uh, there are a lot of letters and correspondences. I think his name is Ian Wilkins, if I'm not, it's Wilkinson or Wilkins or something like that. Uh, He's brought out all the correspondences uh, and it's very uh, uh, detailed on what they were thinking, on how they were proactively thinking about coups and how to prevent them. So they actually decided to continue with the sort of ethnic and regional breakup of division and things like that. And to prevent it becoming that kind of a cohesive with the uh, Air Force and Navy, they didn't care because the Air Force and Navy seldom carry out coups. It's only armies that carry out coups, mostly, not always. There's been naval coups and Air Force coups as well. But it's mostly armies that carry out coups, 99% of coups. And... uh, they actually put in a lot of thought into insulating it from coups. So it wasn't a pure accident. It was actually a great deal of thought and intent that went into it. Hey, Abhijit, uh, just a hypothetical yeah. here. Two minutes, right? Uh, supposing India had stayed united from Atak to Katak and, and, and uh, no Pakistan was formed. I have a different take than many people who are saying that India would have been Islamized by now. India would have been a true secular yes. country. No. India would have been in civil war. India would have been like Lebanon. Hmm. All right. Uh, Partition was the best thing that happened to India at the worst period of time. <laughs> so Jinnah got it absolutely right. You know, he was very clear. He didn't have this room for Nambi Pambi sentimentality that Congress leaders had. And he said very clearly, we eat cows, you worship cows. By no stretch of common sense can we be one country. Next question from Akshit Chandok. Abhijit, how does Russia handle Islamic extremism in Russia today? I'm asking this because you said the USSR completely destroyed their Islamic culture. Chechens are Mm. Islam, right? Chechens, very interesting uh, point. So Chechens resisted that destruction very, very doggedly. Mostly because of the fact they're an extremely small a uh, homogenous region, unlike Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and all of them, that did not have an ethnic identity, uh, a generic, they had a generic ethnic identity. The Chechens always formed a very tight, compact state. They had a very strong ethnic identity. Remember, Stalin and the Russian Empire genocided them several times. Uh, Stalin moved the entire Chechen nation away into uh, 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 Siberia and Kazakhstan and things like that. They resisted it. Uh, And they've always been a hotbed of Wahhabi uh, fundamentalism in a way that Central Asia uh, managed to avoid for most of its history. Uh, If you look at it technically, I would say that the earliest expressions of uh, extreme Wahhabism, where uh, extreme Islamic extremism, where in Sudan, the Mahdi revolt, and in uh, Chechnya, the revolt against, I forget now, but I think he was one of the modern-day terrorists or leaders of Chechnya is named after that guy, either Shamil Basayev or Jokhar Dudayev. I forget which one, but uh, uh, there was a great Chechen revolt which was extremely religious. Think of it as the Russian version of the Mopla rebellion. Or let's call it what it was, the Mopla terror uh, and massacre uh, uprising. Next question from Anosh Amaria. 
what is the status of the procurement of the scar s c a r and other rifles for the military why aren't we able to manufacture a good indigenous rifle good question so you know the um, surprisingly the the uh, indigenous rifle was actually a very decent rifle do you know that they tested it they did a lot of testing for it you know they buried it in deserts they uh, buried it in the same guns were taken and buried in snow and all of that uh, it survived the first compromise happened when they had to use wood instead of plastic for the stock and the problem was all the initial test models were very very good but the uh, it got completely destroyed in production why because the kind of metal tolerances the metal forging and things like that uh, the manufacturing of the stock and things like that it had to be done in a high technology environment not in a high labor environment all your gun factories are all uh, uh, high labor in, uh, uh, environments they're not high technology environments so there was a lot of mistakes made in manufacturing and you know these things you can't afford the, to do uh, 18th 19th century early 20th century manufacturing on these rifles anymore that is where it was let down now with the scar now the issue has been we've been managed to uh, kind of semi indigenize some rifles but even there there are huge quality problems with the uh, uh, sitara i think that that's a smaller version of the tavor and things like that but it's more to do with it can be done in fact rifles is one of the things that can be done very easily if you're willing to sack most of the workers of the ichapur rifle factory and your other rifle manufacturing factories next you know, question to just thousand people and automate the manufacturing process next question is from arun gupta india's economy saw growth due to their dairy and animal husbandry at the same time veganism is gaining control even though it is not eco friendly in itself i don't know if that's true or not what do you think is the future of dairy jab tak veganism is uh, eco friendly boss i don't know why you yeah. think it's not i know i i don't agree with that also yeah yeah uh, so there is that uh, look there's several issues involved out here in a country like india where uh, you know uh, you your protein depends so much on dairy be it paneer be it dahi be it ghee be it butter whatever uh veganism isn't really going to take off remember veganism is a luxury in europe only very rich people can afford to be vegan or people who are willing to sacrifice a huge part of their disposable income into their commitment to be vegan number 1 number 2 what happens is there is no recognition of the cruelty of the dairy industry there is this belief that the beef industry is extremely cruel but the uh, dairy industry is extremely benign boss what do you think happens to cows when they stop producing milk what do you think happens to the calves who drink up all the milk they are denied their food all the males are sent off to slaughter houses where do you think your shoes come from why do you think india is such a big leather center you think leather grows in the, the uh, stratosphere like kudrati biryani this kudrati leather that drops down uh, from this thing you know i know temples that have sold their cows to people who you know very well what they're going to do with it there's actually a documentary about this about temples selling their cows to beef butchers after they're done with the cows so the dairy industry is also extremely cruel don't go around uh, you know glorifying it as some uh, paragon of virtue or things like that and then you'll have these idiots tell you oh sir you know you're not meant to feed the calf that much milk it gets sick bhai the cow is producing milk for the calf the calf drinks as much as it wants or it does not i'll suggest you ration milk to your own babies first before you say calves should drink the entire amount of milk that uh, the cow produces so you know this the indian way of you know going off on this fantasies of uh, ben- benign kindness of the dairy industry when it in fact it is one of the most cruel industries that there is it supplies your entire leather factories and things like that nobody wants to talk about the male cows in this entire equation 
or the calves, the male calves specifically. Because guess where all your soft leather comes from? Right? So it's not going anywhere. It's there to stay precisely because you're a low income market and our uh, uh, low disposable income market and our propensity for fantasizing and uh, attributing the most benign motives to the greatest cruelty will continue unabated. Next question from Abhilash Jayachandra. Do you think any country will take it upon themselves to prove that COVID is a bioweapon? If yes, which country would that be? Nobody will take it on. Next question from Pranav Naresh. Abhijit, you said soft power floats on hard power. So how come a protectorate like Tibet had such a massive influence over King China? Q-I-N-G China. Qing China. Uh, very simple. I think you forget uh, how much a, uh, a religious movement, and mind you, they didn't have that much influence over Qing China. They had more of an influence over Yuan China, and then more of a secondary influence. You compare their influence to over Yuan China to their influence over Qing China, it is actually much diminished. So Qing being the Manchu dynasty. So three dynasties. Yuan is the Mongol dynasty, Chinggis Khan's dynasty. Then there is the uh, uh, Ming dynasty, which is the native Chinese dynasty, even though technically it wasn't native because the second emperor, the Yongle emperor, well, technically the third emperor, was actually... Uh, 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 the bastard son of uh, one of the Mongols. So uh, technically it's speculated. So technically it was a half Mongol dynasty. And uh, then the Qing, the Manchu dynasty, which is again considered a foreign dynasty. Uh, uh, it, it wasn't all that much. But uh, I think you're confusing cultural interaction with influence. The influence of the Tibetans over the Mongols was much greater than it ever was over the Qing number one. Second, remember, Tibet was a formidable military power for most of its history. People also tend to forget that. All right, Tibetans were extremely capable and brutal warriors. Again, people tend to forget that. Third was because they created a kind of cottage industry out of... Uh, 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 Buddhism, they had the normative power of recognition. All right. But throughout, it was always the uh, Tibetan king or Lama being recognized by the emperor in Beijing, not the other way around. Remember that. The relation between the pontiff of Tibet, be it uh, uh, royal or religious, was not the same authority as the Pope had over kings of Europe. Not at all. It was in fact a very clearly a subsidiary relationship. They did, however, have some kind of normative influence on them. That was about it. And third, it did float on hard power. Uh, Arun Gupta wants to know, um, just as you mentioned, we require police reforms. Do you think prison reforms are also required? What, do you, what are your exactly. thoughts on, on open prison? What kind of open prison? Well, we, you, we'll uh, have because to... See, yeah. In case of extremely violent, extremely violent uh, prisoners, you can't have uh, open prison. Open prison is meant for low security prisons. Uh, but, uh, you know, this coming in, rotating in and out prisons, no. But open prisons where you're not locked up, but you are confined within the periphery of the prison. So be specific about what kind of prisons you're talking about. Yes. And if you make it a, a place of learning and reskilling, yes, it would. You, you desperately need that. Because right now there is absolutely nothing. Take this from somebody who's been, spent 43 days in jail. There's absolutely nothing for you to do except watch TV. Oh, you have a TV in your room. How is jail. that? Yeah. But how is that productive? <laughs> you tell me, how is it productive? See, it. you need to be taught skills. You need to be doing things. You need to be focused on certain things. And there is a whole post-punitive. Punishment by itself does not work. 
punishment is one part of it you also need to reconstruct the person give them psychological help during that period etc 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 uh in case of particularly violent criminals open prisons absolutely will not work uh, for the s- safety of other prisoners so there can be a gradation system that once they you know the violent tendency start going and things like that it would Uh, let's see it's always very difficult to scale up these experiments these experiments work in small european countries i'm yet to see it worked in a scaled up form because it is a quality approach there is no money for that kind of quality in india next question from sandeep sandeep k what are your views on jayant bhandari who sorry boss we don't know who he is next question shalab pradhan What's your take on the recent cases of uranium smuggling from our country? What should be done to enhance our security um, of the nuclear industry? So the good thing about this uh, uh, case of uranium smuggling was that it was detected and it was acted upon. so this particular incident should not worry you because it was detected and acted upon what worries me is incidents that are not detected and not diagnosed for example the mayapuri incident where cobalt was thrown out by some university uh, lab was picked up kabadi wala and three hospitals in turn could not recognize the sign the doctors couldn't diagnose the signs of radiation burn that is much more scary than here here this is not an issue this is actually a good thing because it's actually a good tick in our uh, nuclear uh, uh, charge sheet the next question from trashnan is there any chance this government is going to look into blockchain smart contracts kind of solutions to help people get easy access to capital no it's not and i'll tell you why uh it is two separate things it is cryptocurrency plus blockchain that helps you overcome certain things the government will never agree to either one because it always comes late to anything after the ship has already uh, sailed and number two in the case of blockchain you know when you put in smart contracts what happens is there are certain agreed uh parameters it's kind of an escrow where after certain agreed parameters have been met the money is released now what has happened in the last seven international arbitrations india has refused to accept international arbitration so they will never agree to allow anything that makes automaticity of payment an absolute based on their own criteria okay because it shows you a bureaucratic incompetence you will never have that similarly the whole main reason they won't allow cryptocurrency is they want the ability to destroy the economy by publishing as many notes and things cryptocurrency is one of the most effective tools cryptocurrency used in conjunction with bitcoin uh, with uh, blockchain is one of the most effective tools against government economic incompetence you know publishing uh, uh, printing money as you wish to overcome a crisis etc uh, etc et and that is why it will never do well it will never be implemented especially in india or when it is the entire drama will be over sandeep k wants to know is mass ghar wapsi possible if temples are free to spend their money on its devotees it's not just about temples first temple management has to be given back but then you have to have some kind of a united uh, 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 set of hiring practices uh, policies and things like that no uh, to have uh, uh, hindu schools hindu colleges etc 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 uh, jobs only for hindus in certain hindu institutions and things like that so no uh, by itself no don't think of it as a one shot solution it's an ecosystem solution Next question from Crypto Gyan which is Modi's bigger fault secular ideals or a glory hound neither it's his inferiority complex this need for validation by people who will never give him validation 
and paranoia about anybody trying to replace him. Next question. Which comes from the inferiority complex. So the inferiority complex is ground zero. Chetan Pai wants to ask you a question. Agreed with AIM that the kingdom is one of the best series. There is also a revival of Buddhism and indigenous religion in South Korea. Do you think developed countries after a point see themselves as part of a big civilization? Um, I won't take these revival movements seriously because you see a revival of Slavic paganism in Russia, in Lithuania, in Norway and Sweden. They're more in Norway and Sweden. They've actually become a hold for white supremacists and things like that, which they have been for a long time. Remember, uh, Germany, uh, uh, Hitler could never forget Jesus for being a Jew. In fact, the only successful democratic protest against uh, the Nazi regime was when Hitler ordered the removal of crosses from all German classrooms. So, uh, uh, it at best will be a fringe movement like the Wicca movement, uh, you know, so-called witches. They, they try to say witchcraft was actually the Gaelic religion. Absolute bullshit. But uh, uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things. It will at best be niche. It's like the market for Rajnikanth in Japan. Rajnikanth is very popular in Japan in a certain... Uh, uh, fringe or way in the same way that uh, 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 what was that uh, uh, South Korean uh, dancer the uh, duck 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 oh oh I know who you're talking about I I, I know who you're talking about the, the, the new dance thing I remember that yeah yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. so it's like that it's a fad it's not going to lead to anything concrete Okay, last question. Shalab Pradhan wants to know, short of violence, what can we do as a nation to generate a positive and favorable attitude from Pakistan? Would creating eco-vested interest in Pakistan help? You can't. You can't. It's that simple. Uh, you've tried everything under the sun, utilizing them economically, uh, taking them on militarily. Ultimately, it comes down to what Cato the Elder said about Carthage. Delendam esa Carthago. Carthage must be destroyed. Hey, last um, the thought on. Uh, looks like India has had better luck with hey, Bangladesh. Bangladesh, Bangladesh. Bangladesh seems Bangladesh to be a, 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 a more successful a experiment. experiment. Yes, because why? Because the military doesn't interfere for a very long time, even though they're strong. Uh, you've had a, uh, 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 a prime minister who's focused entirely on economic growth. Not that it's been corruption free. There's horrific corruption out there, but it's uh, it's still focused on economic growth. And remember, it's mostly been because of the personal commitment of Sheikh Hasina and the way she has handled her own military. Had it been that other woman, Khalid Zia, coming back to power, it would, it's always different. Because remember, the Bangladesh rifles were in league with Khalida Zia, whereas the uh, Bangladesh military are in league with uh, the Awami League. And uh, that brings us to a close on today's Hangout. Thank you very much, Abhijit. And those of you whose questions were not answered, we are going to defer them for the next week's session. And we'll, be try, we'll try our best to have a 90-minute session next week. And hopefully, we'll be able to get to all your questions. In fact, last week, we were able to answer all the questions. Abhijit, as always, pleasure having you on our channel. Namaskar. And Vetri Vail, Veera Vail. Vail, Vail, Vetri Vail. So, I, I, I got you. I, I came ahead of you. Thank you so much. Very bad. Very bad. Very bad. It was homophobic. <laughs>